Welcome to Tuesday's Tips and Tales. We are live at 5, 5 p.m. Actually, Corey's not here because tonight we're going to talk about um, babies and what happens after. All of this, of course, transpired as a result of spending an amazing weekend with two of my favorite people who had a brand new baby girl and my BFF, who um, is amazing, just popped this kid out at 47 years old, and she's absolutely beautiful. And there's nothing like a newborn baby. We like to smell them, we like to hold them, we like to kiss them all over. I like to sniff them. They just, there's nothing like the smell of a newborn baby. So, you know, it was amazing because it brought back memories. I have a daughter who's um, eight years old, and just seeing her hold this little baby was, um, it was just fantastic. I never thought I would see that day um, because they grow up so fast. So you sit there and say, how does this all happen? And then what happens from there? What happens after you have a baby? And even before we jump, put the cart before the horse on that, um, just gearing up to have a baby and your relationship with your husband or partner. It's a long road. You know, a lot of us women, it's like, don't touch me. <laughs> I'm fat. My, I got cankles. I have no sex drive. And my belly is out to here. I don't want to be touched. And I think the guys get that. But, you know, they have needs too. And that's why you buy them toys. Um, so even just getting up to that point of having a baby is um, a, it's a relationship challenge. And then if you throw in the mix of having like one or two other kids that you already have, how do you find time for each other? How does it work? How do you like get that spark going? Well, it's, it is a challenge and you know, so many marriages end because of children and the statistics show that around 80 or 90% of all marriages uh, struggle with um, after they have children. And of course you know the divorce rate. So I think that speaks for itself, including myself, which, um, you know, having a baby and at a later age certainly puts some stress on a relationship. And no matter how many times you try to um, make it more amorous and more sexy and fun like you did before you had a baby, sometimes it just doesn't work. So... This show I decided to uh, dedicate to my two friends who just had this beautiful baby girl um, to wish you much happiness, love, and an amazing marriage. Don't give up. So we're going to talk about how to keep that flame burning and those challenges. So those of you out there that are watching, please dial in. I know it's 5 o'clock. I thought that this would be a good time while you're driving home or um, just before the kids come rolling in the door to, you know, where's dinner? So uh, let's give it a shot and see how it goes. When um, I had my daughter and that first year where you don't sleep, and of course I breastfed, and I'm sure there are many of you women out there that have breastfed and you just don't sleep. My daughter nursed every two hours for like the first three months, it was crazy. And then she was just a nonstop eater, nonstop pooper. I was like, where does this come from? <laughs> where does all this poop come from? And it's because she eats so much. Anyways, I couldn't sleep. And then every time I would, of course, lay down to go to sleep, you get woken up. One of my very dear friends sent me this book. And those of you out there that are listening, I'm sure some of you have seen this. And it says, go the to sleep, um, I can say the word frig because, uh, you know, this is, I try to keep this show as clean as possible. Anyways, this is an amazing book and it's hysterical because it really puts in writing in a very short boutique book about how you feel, you know? So for instance, uh, here we have the cats nestle close to their kittens. The lambs have laid down with their sheep. You're cozy and warm in your bed, my dear. Please go the beep to sleep. And, you know, here you have a little picture of the cute little kid, you know, next to the kitties. But that, that kid ain't asleep. There's no way. 
They, they just don't sleep. Some of them don't. Uh, let's see. The windows are dark in town, child. The wheels huddle down in the deep. I'll read you one very last book. If you swear, you'll go the beep to sleep. And we know that's the F word. I'm just not going to say it. So this little book goes on about get that kid to sleep. Because this is your time to either take a nap or get sexy with your husband or partner. Take a shower. <laughs> Do your nails. How about just like eat? This is your time to um, enjoy yourself. So I, I love this book and I'm going to pass this along to my friends uh, that go the F to sleep. Now in line with that, we should talk about this whole, so you, you have the baby, you're in the hospital, and everyone says, oh, I just want to go home. Stay in that hospital for as long as you can, because once you go home, it's like free game, and you will not have any time to yourself, especially in the beginning. Now, if you have a great partner, of course, um, that partner will get up and help with the feedings and change of the diapers, and it's teamwork. But sometimes you don't have that because you're both either the breadwinners or he's the breadwinner or she's the breadwinner. So you have to figure that out. And that alone, I feel like you need to have um, a, um, a plan, like a business plan <laughs> of how you're going to manage when you first bring home your, your baby. Because you do have to carve out that time to not only spend with your significant other, but how about your other children if you have other children? You know, put them to work, absolutely, if they're older and they can change diapers. I mean, you know, you've got little helpers, helpers there. Use them. So when you have that extra time, probably your first inclination is like, oh, I just want to sit down and go to sleep. Maybe rethink that. Like, there's got to be this business plan. And the business plan is put your priorities, like set up a list of, okay, this is what needs to be done, and then carve out like a date night once a week with um, your significant other, and take turns at planning that uh, date. And if it, if it doesn't work once a week, maybe it works every other week, or worst case scenario, once a month, but it's completely a total time for you. Take that total time and gear it towards one another. Now, that could include getting a babysitter or family, uh, you know, taking care of it. Go out to dinner or schedule some massages together, you know. And believe me, you know, after I had my baby and I had a C-section, it was like, you can't do, bless, you cannot do anything for six weeks. First of all, you can barely touch your toes. But if you drop something, someone else has to pick it up. So that first six weeks is, is really a struggle, for, especially for C-section uh, women. So I feel your pain. Plus, you still look pregnant. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's like, I remember people saying, oh, you're having a baby. I'm like, ah, oh, I already did. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I think that in at least most of our minds is getting to the gym or yoga or something. But that works generally more for the moms who do natural birth versus the C-section women. We want to get back to being that sexy woman that we were, so our husband still will be attracted to us or partners. And we also want to try to get back to a routine that is uh, that will, you know, create an environment where you're working together. So in line with that, you know, there is a lot of stress, and you're going to probably lose your cool. Or, you know, be stressed. And keep in mind that babies can sense that. They can sense the stress. They can, believe it or not, you might be in another room and, you know, maybe you're yelling at each other. Try not to do that because it does make them uneasy and they will pick up on it and it will be stressful, which is, um, you know, you sometimes don't think that a little baby, you know, can hear or, or um, read your behavior or your signs, but they really do. It's quite amazing. Uh, they're smart. They're smarter than we all give them credit for. Try to keep those arguments into somewhere where the child will not hear you, especially your other children, too. So bringing that in line with, you know, some of the top recommendations that I have for, you know, keeping it together 
Uh, and, you know, you probably say, oh, well, hey, Cece, you're divorced. Well, th there's a lot that goes with that as well. But I think that if things could have been a little bit different on the child side, it definitely would have been a smoother road to um, having a relationship. So keep that in mind. So number one is be a team. Really be a team together no matter what. Not like, hey, it's your turn, no, it's your turn, and bickering over who's feeding or changing the baby. Just, just get up and do it. You know, don't let that baby feel like there's stress or pressure of either one of you taking care of um, him or her. So, you know, make a plan. Make a, have a schedule. We all have schedules. We have all these devices. And we could certainly put a schedule together so there is no conflict and there's no stress because at the end of the day, when that baby comes home, both of you, got, both of you are going to be exhausted to the point where you might just pass out in bed and say, I don't touch me. <laughs> and that includes you guys. You know, I, they say you're always up for everything. Sometimes you're not because of all the uh, pressure and stress of taking care of a, a newborn baby. And you're also concerned about your, your wife or your partner. Uh, and what their needs are. So you're kind of caring for two uh, versus one. So then your relationship moves along and the baby's getting a little bit older. Then you can actually maybe take a breather. Again, keep up with those once a week or every other week, you know, one-on-one -on -one dates. Or a family, if you have other children, maybe do a family event and get out of the house. You know, everyone's like, you know, these doctors or nurses are like, oh, you're going to catch germs, this and that. Now, summer months definitely are the best, you know, spring, summer, early fall. Um, but in the winter, don't lock yourself up in that house with that baby because, you know, there, there are depression uh, issues uh, related to having a baby. And those are signs, guys, that you need to look out for and partners because it's very real. And post um, uh, baby depression can lead to other more serious issues. So try to really get a hold on your partner, no matter how much you have to work or hop on a plane. Just really get your arms around um, how your wife is feeling. Because if there are depression and you leave and you go on a business trip and she's stuck home with the baby, you just don't want. Um, it to get worse, and you want to address the issue and provide support. It's it's a real thing. I mean, your hormones when you have a baby are flying off the rails, and it's very unmanageable sometimes. Like you don't, a lot of women don't even know that they're in the um, having some you know post baby blues. So it really takes outsiders, you know, family, spouses, to recognize that and try to help them. And in line with that. You know, having children, not just even in the beginning, as they go through the years and develop and get through the phases of, you know, being able to go to the bathroom by themselves, woo-hoo, feeding themselves, woo-hoo, uh, they, um, they become older and there are more challenges and that affects your relationship. And it, and it isn't easy. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's really any answer to it. All you can do is try and give it your best. And if it's not working, go to therapy. Don't be like the big macho guy and be like, I'm not going to therapy, forget about it, you know, I'm too cool for that, or that's not going to work. you got to go out and, and talk to someone. And even if your wife, you know, just launches on all the issues that are upsetting her, it, it's so critical to get that out on the, the table. So you can um, address it and try to um, manage any conflict or losing those feelings, you know. You don't want to lose that loving feeling because that usually leads to infidelity and divorce. Or maybe not even infidelity, but just divorce because people are not happy. Focus on making that person, and this is true too for you ladies, number one, you know, don't expect, you know, you hear marriages where, oh, I was just a roommate. And it's so true that, you know, I think people just get really comfortable with themselves. You know, you have someone taking care of the children. You have someone who's, you know, taking care of the house, the dog, and you're off working, whether it's the, the, the husband or the wife who's the breadwinner. 
and then all of a sudden maybe they're undervalued or underrecognized or they feel like they don't exist. And those issues in line with taking care of children, babies, and finding time to have sex. I mean, come on, let's really talk about that. You know, sex is critical to a relationship and you go far too long without it and somebody, somebody's going to stress. I, I'm not advocating it at all, of course, but, you know, it takes work. When, when people say they're going to get married and think, oh, it's going to be wonderful, it is work. It's a job. And then when you throw the mix of children in it, it's either going to make or break your relationship. So on that note, we have to, again, go back to prioritizing. Sit down and put a list together of, of what your needs are, and as well as your partner's, and discuss them with each other. I know, it sounds like, oh, I'm not going to do that. Forget about it. Well, you know, pour a glass of wine, have a date night, and talk to each other. And men, don't discount women's feelings. Yeah, you know, sometimes we can be crazy, and, and so can guys. Guys can be very unemotional and um, very unattentive. They, and, and they don't mean to. Maybe they don't know how to do it. But don't discount what the woman is telling you about how she feels, about how this baby is making her feel. You know, men, you don't realize it, but, you know, all of a sudden we come out of the hospital with this new baby and our body has gone to hell in a handbag. You know, even for the women who work out, my girlfriend, incessant exerciser from bar to jogging uh, to yoga. And when you leave that hospital, you look. <laughs> the same way as when you went in. It's very frustrating. It's not like all of a sudden, oh, that baby popped out at eight pounds and I'm going to be skinny and, you know, sexy. It, it's quite the opposite. You know, ankles are still the size of elephants. You know, the boobs are good. The boobs are, you know, oh, that was the best part of my pregnancy besides having my daughter. But, you know, you get some big cans going on and it makes you feel amazing. But then, you know, you can't really see down over the stomach because your body takes so much time to, um, to get back to normal and to rebound. And sometimes that doesn't even happen. And in my case, I have to tell you, you know, I've always been athletic and in shape. And I had a baby at a later age. And I was like this, I'm not going to move for nine months because I'm high risk and I'm, I'm not going to lose this baby. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. But um, there are women who exercise it through their entire pregnancy, and that's fantastic. But some women, either mentally or physically, can't do it. And I was one of the women who was like, I have tried so long to have this baby that I don't want to take any chances. So I gave up my, you know, my fit lifestyle, and um, when I had the baby, you know, I hired a personal trainer. And... You know, who can do that all day, you know, every week? It's, it, it's expensive, and sometimes it doesn't work, and it didn't work in my case. So a client of mine talked me into playing tennis. I was a tennis player in high school and played singles, and they needed a singles player, so I got out there, and I played singles and, like, played my butt off, and all of a sudden, I was getting in shape. It was fantastic. And so then... That in line with I took up Pilates and yoga and mixed up my um, workout regimen because it changes not only after you have a baby, your metabolism, but also as you get older. And women, the older they get, I mean, by the time you're 50, you can forget about it. Like, your metabolism is probably shot to less than 50% of its full working capacity, probably around 30%. You know, my doctor said, you know, hey, you know, you're getting older. This is what happens. You have to watch what you eat more. And, you know, I'm practically eating bark off trees. You know, that's how healthy I eat. But your body, a woman's body changes so much. I mean, men, you can go out there and, like, roll, like, tractor tires down the street. And you'll have, like, a, a ripped rip stomach. But diet is a big part of it as well. You know, diet, alcohol, um, uh, lifestyle, environment. So take all these factors in and... The guy's going, I'm never going to get laid again. <laughs> and, you know, you might not. But the key is to try and make your woman feel beautiful, even if she has that extra, you know, tire around her waist for now. 
until the baby hormones wear off. Encourage her to work out. Give her the time. Watch that baby and those kids if you have other kids. And let her go to the gym. Let her get a babysitter so she can go to the gym or, or to a yoga class or, you know, CrossFit. Encourage her. You know, if she doesn't, you know, even if she's working, you could certainly cover the kids in the morning or at night so she can go and, and get in shape. Now, then there's the women who just give up. And, and I'm sorry that that happens. That's, you know, I can see why you give up. Because all of a sudden you're in this whirlwind of like taking care of a baby and it's all about the baby and your husband. And then all of a sudden you're looking down and you're like, oh my God, I went from a size 4 to a 14. And then once you get that far, you feel like there's no return. And then that's probably a time where you have to make a decision to see like a nutritionist and maybe a therapist and your doctor and have some medical guidance in that respect. Or just try to go out and do it. I mean, just get yourself pumped up. You can actually go on YouTube and there are tons of videos on bar classes and, um, you know, TRX and yoga where you can actually do it for a nominal cost or, or some, a lot of them are free and try to get yourself um, back into shape. You know, and more importantly, getting back into shape, there's a mental side to it. I don't know about you ladies, but when I'm working out, whatever's going on with the endorphins and the exercise, it's actually like an hour session with a therapist. It's fantastic. You feel great. You feel like you're on top of the world and you're like, ah, you know, you feel sexy. Even if you're not seeing it all come off rapidly, at least you can go in there and get your head straight. And just, whether it's punching a punching bag or doing yoga in complete silence and mmm, whatever it is, it's great for your head. You know, expect a long journey to get back to normal. It took me years. But for the brain and the health, the, the brain health is so important because it helps you with your children and your spouse. And it helps you address the everyday challenges that we all have. And nobody's alone in this, people. Nobody's alone in this. Uh, you have to work together. Again, husbands, that woman's popping out a pup for you. You've got to support her. You let her have some freedom so she can, like, mentally and physically get back to where she needs to be so you can get some action in the in in the boudoir okay and you know in line with that you know girls you gotta take care of your boy you know even though maybe you can have sex or your, your hormones out there or you're not getting amorous down there take care of him I don't care how you do it don't need to know how you do it if you want me to give you advice on that shoot me an email I would love to offer up some suggestions and if you go through all of uh, most of my videos you know my uh, CC live videos there are so many so much great advice on relationships and uh, physical needs mental needs what to do how to take care of each other and you will actually laugh a lot as well it will be a great source of entertainment get the book the book is sexy I have yet to to, you know, people read the book and, and they're all true stories, but you, there are some stories you get a little bit excited about. So get that book and let him read it. I mean, it's great for you, but let him read it. Um, you could do it together in bed, and that would be a wonderful way to break the ice. And that kind of goes to my last point of communication. You have a baby. You have children. The communication, you can't let it stop. You can't... You have to continue, and you have to be open, and not criticize, and not be opinionated or call each other names. The goal is to try and get through this, because at the end of the day, if you can, you're going to grow up and have an amazing life with an amazing family and children, and actually, they're going to benefit from it. Um, there's so much research on how children develop from the environment that they grow up in. And not even talking divorce. I mean, you know, divorce is, this is it. This is a way of the world. And it's how you handle the divorce. And it's how you treat each other, be, you know, beyond the divorce when you are two separate entities. But we're not here to talk about divorce. We're here to talk about 
having babies and still having a relationship. Babies and then what? The then what is communicate, find time with each other, love each other, do the best you can, and don't be afraid to admit like you're driving me crazy. That's okay. It's just try not to take it out on the children or each other and do date night. Please, just like for, <laughs> take my advice on this, keep up with the date nights, keep up with the communication, and even if you're rolling around in bed, do some cuddling, light some candles, and if you can't actually have sex, there are so many other things you can do in bed, right? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of half the fun of it, is there's so much you can do in bed together, so do it, get it done, and have babies, and then open your world up to having a wonderful future together. This is Cece. Um, check out Beaver Tales and podcasts. Loved sharing uh, my thoughts and uh, recommendations to you guys. And if you want to contact me personally, you can go to my website, www.beavertalesbook.com. My email is on there. You can shoot me messages. I'm on Twitter at Beaver Tales Book. Facebook, Beaver Tales fan page, where you are right now, and also on LinkedIn, you will find me. So there's a way to get to me, and I'll be glad to help you any way I can. So everybody, get naked tonight, have some fun, enjoy each other's company, and kiss that, those babies for me. I love them. Good night, and we'll see you in two weeks, because it's summer schedule. Have a great day.